cool. You thought you could return to the past and destroy me? <laughs> I have cast you down into a place with no future or past. A place between time. Let's start this review with a disclaimer. I am not a Samurai Jack fan. I'm not saying it's a bad show. I've read and heard a lot of good opinions and reviews about the show. It's just that it wasn't for me. So the entire review of this game is based solely on the game's merit and not any nostalgia I feel for the series. With that out of the way, let's get on with the review. Samurai Jack Battle Through Time is a typical hack and slash game in the vein of old PS2 classics like God of War and Devil May Cry. While those were good action games for their time and some of their remasters even hold up today, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time is at best a mediocre replica of these games and at worst of times a frustrating mess. I did a bit of research on the story of the game before I wrote this segment. The story seems to be a retread of season 5 of the show, which aired in 2017. The game starts with a cutscene where Jack and Ashi are facing against the evil wizard Aku. Ashi discovers she can use Aku's different powers. She then teleports them away, but Aku interferes and Jack is separated from her and sent to a different timeline, where he crash lands in a mine. The mine serves as a tutorial for the basic movement and combat of the game. Once you're past the mine, you end up in a swamp where you fight some robot alligators armed with clubs and guns. Then you face off against one of Jack's old friends, the Scotsman, who's being controlled by Aku. After this level, you travel to different locations in this alternate timeline, facing off against some of Jack's old foes and meeting some of his old friends like Rothschild, the Scotsman and his daughter. You meet these NPCs in most of the levels and they help you out by giving you items or gems which are used to unlock skills. You meet another NPC, the Samurai, who always seems to be one step ahead of you in the game and always meets you before a boss battle or an important fight. He acts like a store where you can buy items, weapons and improve skills. The first time you hear his music, it's amusing by the end of the game, you get fed up of the same track looping over. The story takes place through in-game cutscenes and text dialogue between the characters you meet. If you are a Samurai Jack fan, you may find some enjoyment from the story and meeting some of the old characters. However, the story is lackluster. There isn't much dialogue given to flush out the characters, also the cutscenes and voice acting are terrible. Why do I listen to you? He's gotta be in the city. Ha. <laughs> that poster is just about as close as we're ever gonna get to finding the samurai. <laughs> no wonder I divorced you. The gameplay is ripped right out of the old Devil May Cry games, right down to the rank screen at the end of each mission. It's very old school hack and slash, and sometimes not in a good way. Although each of the nine missions take place in unique locations, mission and objective variety is non-existent. All the missions have battle sections, traversal sections, a mini boss and a final boss fight. The last mission is unique in the sense that it's one long tedious wave mode concluding with a fight with Aku. The minute to minute gameplay can be fun for the most part, until you face a group of ranged enemies and get hit with projectiles coming off screen, or get stuck in an animation loop of getting hit with projectiles and melee attacks with no way of countering back or moving out of the way. It's especially annoying when you face these bounty hunters with missiles in the later missions. The combat is very animation focused, once you swing a sword or dodge, you are committed to that action and there's no way to cancel out. 
So, while you're mid-action, if you get hit with something or dodge into something, a fun combo can become a death penalty. Like at this point where I just got frustrated and used a special attack. If the game wanted me to do that here, then that's just bad game design. Combat encounters in an action game should be open-ended. Hand the players the tools, how they use it should be left up to them. This is why every time I saw a ranged enemy, I had to change focus to kill that enemy as soon as possible. I did have a good time when there weren't ranged enemies shooting at me off screen. Let's get to weapon durability. Besides your magic sword and the fists, all the other weapons can and will break. There are four classes of melee weapons. Swords, spears, hammers, clubs. You can use your fists also if you don't have any other weapons. All four classes and the fists have their own upgrades. The durability system forces you to experiment with different weapons, but the downside is you can't get attached to any of them. Also, you can ignore the weapon names. I found a spear called the lightning spear, but to my disappointment, it didn't do any lightning damage. Heck, even his magic sword doesn't do any magic. It's just magical in a way that it has infinite durability. There are different range weapons like the bow and arrow, handgun, machine gun, and throwable items like throwing knives, shurikens, and explosives. Range weapons do not have upgrades and have terrible durability. Like a gun loses all its durability after firing a few shots. The same is true with the bows and the machine guns. I would understand how a wooden bow breaks after a few shots, but how a gun breaks so easily is beyond me. In addition to durability, all ranged weapons have ammo. Bows need arrows and guns need bullets. So you either run out of ammo or the weapon breaks and you have to get a new one. All the other throwing weapons are limited too and buying new ones costs a lot of gold. The other in-game items are prayer beads and consumables. Prayer beads can increase your attack, reduce damage or increase weapon durability. But you can only equip one of them at a time. The consumable items restore health, increase weapon damage or decrease damage inflicted on you for a set duration. But there is a penalty for using them that reduces your overall level score. So I never use them until the final mission. There are also three skill trees which can be upgraded. Upgrades start out by using basic resources like skill fire and Bushido spirit, which are obtained through combat or in chess. But later, obscure items like diamonds, rubies and desert gems are used to unlock more powerful skills. There is no indication of where to find these gems. You get them randomly throughout the game in chess or through NPCs. And because of a lack of these gems, you can get locked out of some of the more powerful skills. I'm sure there's a walkthrough detailing their locations, but on a first playthrough, it's quite confusing. Besides skills, you can use special attacks called Kial attacks, which are charged up by collecting Kial fire. These attacks are quite powerful and can take large chunks of health of a boss. In fact, I saved them to specifically use on bosses because boss battles are not particularly engaging. Using them felt like a cheat, but it's a game mechanic and you can use them how you want. Other than combat and basic platforming, you can explore the levels to find hidden chests and there are some puzzles to solve to reveal some of them. The gameplay is fine. It's not the worst game in the genre, but it's not amazing either. The controls, however, feel floaty throughout, even when using a DualShock controller. I don't know if this is a problem with the iOS version or just a problem with the game. There are clearly areas and encounters through the game put there just to pad its length, like combat arenas with older enemies showing up in the mid and late game. One particularly annoying example of this is the character Demongo, who's a mini boss who appears four times throughout the game. And with the exception of his last fight, he doesn't really pose a threat. He's an annoying character throughout the game and hearing him repeat the same four lines of dialogue through the fights grades on you. By the time I was at his last fight, I played the game on mute. Just the 
is up now. <laughs> After each mission, you are awarded a rank based on how you performed, but it felt completely meaningless. There is an entire combo system I didn't explore because the combat of the game just isn't that interesting. There's also a challenge mode and some higher difficulties, but I wasn't motivated enough to want to try them. Here's where the game disappoints the most. Love it or hate it. Samurai Jack has a unique art style, and that is lost in translation, at least on the iPad. There are some levels where the game looks absolutely gorgeous. These are the times where I was absolutely amazed by how good these levels looked, and it's no surprise that most of these levels are 2D. Which is why I'm baffled by the decision to make this game 3D. It would have been so much better as a 2D side-scroller. It would also have looked much closer to the show's art, I'm just gonna let this whole section play out to explain what I mean better. This whole section is done so well that it makes the rest of the game look dull in comparison. The visual presentation for the most part is bland textures and rough edges, which is even more noticeable in the cutscenes. The environments are also sparsely populated, aside from when enemies spawn, which is evident in the gameplay shown so far. I agree, some of this may lie in the fact that this game is designed to be played on all platforms even the Nintendo Switch. But games with similar art styles like Breath of the Wild or Genshin Impact don't look like this. The game runs between 45 and 50 frames per second and the frame rate does drop when there are large groups of enemies on screen, but it doesn't get unplayable. There are also a few graphical bugs like occasional clipping and getting stuck in the environment. In the final Demongo fight, I got stuck twice behind the wall that shows up during combat. I couldn't get out or attack and I had to reset. This was further irritating because it's facing the most annoying character in the game. Another bug is when I opened the menu here and I couldn't select anything. Not too many bugs overall, but definitely some really annoying ones. Aside from the 2D levels, the visuals disappoint. Even the special KL attacks do nothing to stand out, and their animations are uninspiring. The in-game cutscenes are laughably bad. The last time I remember seeing such cutscenes were of watching early PS1 games. I have not edited the audio for the following in any way. This place, Aku's mines. I'm back in the past, but not where I should be. Ashi. Ashi! Also, the music barely stands out. For the most part, the soundtrack goes unnoticed, despite there being two tracks per level, one for platforming and one for combat. It's an okay soundtrack, but could definitely use a boost if you want to hear it while playing. The default setting doesn't do it any justice. Lack of enemy and mission variety. 
run of the mill hack and slash combat an uneven graphical tone poor voice acting i wonder how many of these issues are because of the game being a poor ios port but from the videos i've seen of it on other consoles it seems pretty much the same with the exception of slightly improved visuals on the consoles and pc Samurai Jack Battle Through Time can be an enjoyable experience if you are a Samurai Jack fan. The game has decent value if you got it as part of your Apple Arcade subscription. And that is the problem here, the ifs. The game has many reasons not to play it and few compelling ones in its favor. If you have a weekend to spare and are willing to play an average hack and slash game, give this one a look. There is another Apple Arcade hack and slash game with an anime art style called World of Demons that looks promising. Get subscribed for its review. For the purpose of the review, I checked the launch price of this game and it's $40. At this price, it's an absolute waste of money. If you have a console or PC, I suggest buying the Devil May Cry remasters. You'll have a far more enjoyable experience. Before playing this game, I checked out many reviews of it with high scores. This got me pretty hyped out to check it out, as I was hoping for a good hack and slash game on iOS. But I don't know what game those reviewers played because my experience was completely different. I only saw one review from Destructoid that criticized the game for its flaws. This makes me question the validity of those positive reviews. Are they fans of the show, ignoring the flaws of the game? Have they never played a hack and slash game like God of War or Devil May Cry? or had they simply been paid off honestly this felt like a game i had to force myself through just for the review and it wasn't a good feeling if you want to subject me to more terrible apple arcade games like this leave their names in the comment below if you like this review do like comment and share it i'd also recommend that you check out the other videos in this series is apple arcade worth it for some good game reviews and consider subscribing to this channel thank you for watching see you guys next time